These are three main optimizations you can make to actually boost your FPS in Season 4. Please drop a like if it helps and subscribe for more. Starting off, if you open up your task manager, then click on the performance tab. At the bottom you'll find your process count. Now this number will likely be quite high, but what we want to do next is reduce it. Just head at the bottom right of your PC, open up that system tray, and in here you will see the amount of active apps. You don't want it to look mega full like this on screen. Instead, try and reduce these as much as you can. And you can do that by heading into the settings, going into apps here on the left, then clicking on the startup section. Inside here, you will find all the applications that open up when you do boot open your PC, which can have negative effects like Windows taking longer to actually load up, and even performance in general can be affected by these applications. So what we're going to do is go on to sort by... I'm going to choose Startup Impact. What this does is it visibly shows what has higher impact than others. And the higher impact ones are obviously the ones we want to focus on. Now, my general rule of thumb with this is to disable any of these I don't use daily. So with most of these right here, the Epic Games Launcher, the G-Hub, I do use on a daily basis. Microsoft Edge, I do not. So I would disable that as I myself do use Chrome. Same with the Microsoft OneDrive. I get rid of that. Riot Games, I don't really play Valorant much. So I want to go ahead and disable that on startup and just scrolling down you'll find a few again microsoft bing i don't use so i want to get rid of that same with the Vanguard tray notification. The more you do scroll down, the lower the impact will be. And when it comes to low impact or no impact, honestly, they're not really worth disabling, but you can do if you really want to. But as long as you go ahead and disable the ones that you don't use on a daily basis, I myself, I like to keep Epic Games on as the convenience of it opening up when I do boot up my PC is worth it in my opinion. If not, well, you can go ahead and disable it and you are all good for the startup apps. In addition to that, you can go inside of your task manager, go over to the left hand side under startup apps and do the same inside of here but it looks like you get a more like in-depth look into it you've got the startup impact filter in here along with all of the different apps that you can disable on startup if you'd like to so i just thought i'd mention that alternative method right there so make sure to check through these as well in addition next from that though you can go back in the app section and this time you want to go into installed apps where you'll obviously find all of your installed applications now what we're going to do inside of here is we're going to go through each application that we don't want running in the background and you used to be able to do this in literally one click in windows 10 but for some reason in windows 11 it's slightly different so if you just go ahead and find a useless application that you don't want or don't use that's running in the background currently like cortana for example you just click on those three dots, click on advanced options. Where it says background apps permissions, you want to change it from the default power or always to never. And that will prevent it from running in the background. And what you can do from there is literally just find the applications you don't want running in the background and disable them like so. There'll be a few out there, like maps, for example. I myself do not use maps, so I go ahead and get rid of that. Another ideal way is to actually uninstall them, but if you don't want to uninstall them, you can just disable them in the background. And that way, they're still installed on your PC, they're just not running in the background. Just make sure to click never. Next up, I want to go over power plans. Now, if you type in edit power plan, you can go in here, and under the change advanced power settings, you'll get this window. Now, by default for everyone, it's unbalanced, but you'll also to see another option called high performance if you want an additional power plan in the cmd if you paste in this command right here which i'll have in the description below it will add a ultimate performance power plan if you refresh it again you'll see the ultimate performance power plan at the bottom if you choose the ultimate performance power plan what this will do is it'll basically turbocharge your cpu clock speed to the maximum and it'll keep it on this max speed for the majority of the time whereas if you use the balanced power plan this will keep your cpu clock speed at the base speed for the majority of the time and then if you use the power saver mode this will keep your clock speed at the minimum most of the time so if you do choose to use the higher performance one or even the ultimate performance one do keep in mind that these do increase the clock speed by quite a bit so it's basically like it's putting your pc on a higher throttle with ultimate putting it on the highest throttle which can be good while gaming i've heard people getting fps boosts from this however what you don't want to do is keep it on this for like all the time while you're on your pc like if you're doing email 
thumbnails or something. So it's something you can try out, but whatever you do, don't keep it on these permanently. Only use either high performance or ultimate performance when you are gaming. After that, change it back to balanced. Another thing to mention as well is if you have got poor cooling, like you don't have many PC fans, I probably wouldn't recommend using high performance or ultimate at all, as these settings do increase your power usage, and with the higher clock speeds can heat things up, so you definitely don't want any of your components being hurt. Next up, I recommend the use of a stretched resolution. By now, you'll know the benefits of using one. You can get a decent FPS boost while also getting bigger looking player models, but choosing the right one can be a little bit iffy. At the lowest end of stretched resolutions, you got ones like 800 by 600 that do look quite bad visually, like they're a little bit pixelated and stuff, but they do make the game feel really smooth as you'd expect. This means that it's less demanding on your system and therefore can give you a slight FPS boost. Although if we move on to more playable resolutions, we've got ones like 1440 by 1080 who Martos himself really enjoyed during the OG period. This to me is by far one of the best aiming stretched resolutions due to the fact that the field of view is so bad it actually helps you tunnel vision more on enemies and obviously makes them more easier to hit. However, I personally find that the best resolution right now and well has been for quite a while is 1720 by 1080. It's the one Peter bought the FNCS champion has used in the past. Right now he's actually took a break from using a stretched res due to the fact it's not allowed on LAN as the LAN event organisers do want a better viewing experience so they force all the pros to play on the native 1920 by 1080. I do think though once that LAN is out the way he will return back to 1720 by 1080 as it's by far one of the best resolutions that's not too limiting on the FOV but it also has all the amazing benefits of getting a slight FPS boost and having those bigger looking player models. But if you yourself want a stretched resolution like this on screen, there's actually three different methods to do it. But in this video, I'll only be covering one at ease. On your desktop, you want to press the Windows key and R at the same time. Inside here, paste in the percentage sign, local, update, and then the percentage sign again. Then press F and find the Fortnite game. Go into saved, config, Windows client. Then you'll find your config file, that's the game user settings file. Now, before you go ahead and modify this, right click on it, go into show more options, then properties, and ensure that the read only box has been unchecked right now. After that, you can go ahead and open it up. Once inside here, if you scroll down to near the bottom, you should find two resolution sections right here. You want to go ahead and customize both of these to have matching X and Y values of your desired stretch resolution. You can see I've already done it here with the first one, and then here with the second one. Remember, if you want to revert, you can change these back to native. After you've done that, you can click file and then save. And if you go back to your game user settings, you can go ahead and right click on it, show more options, go into properties, and make sure to actually select the read only this time, as this prevents Fortnite from changing the settings back to default or native when you do open up the game. This essentially locks it in when you do click apply. But do remember, if you want to go back to native, you need to uncheck this right here. Please drop a like if it helps out. Also subscribe to the channel and finally use my code in the item shop to support me. Oh, and before you go, check out any of my other videos that are on screen right now.